Hey guys, I'm Jordan and you're watching Fixbook. After watching this video, your car problems stand about as much a chance as this laptop does against my hot lid. Now, make sure you stay tuned so you can see what happened to the laptop at the end of this video. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment down below. So today, I'm going to be showing you how to replace your front brakes, rotors, and pads on your 03 through 08 Pontiac Vive and 03 through 08 Toyota Matrix. Alright, and the tools that I use for today's project are that flathead screwdriver, a 17mm and 14mm socket. I used a large 3 8 ratchet and a regular 3 8 ratchet. A crossbar, you at least need a 21 millimeter and a breaker bar. I use a C clamp, and you'll also need a set of measuring digital calipers. The first thing we'll do here is you want to go ahead and grab your 21 millimeter lug nut and breaker bar or crossbar thing, and we're going to go ahead and remove your hub cap and loosen up your lug nuts. And today I'm just kind of checking mine, and you'll see me taking everything off. And demonstrating everything but I heard mine squealing here not too long ago so I'm just checking them they probably probably not everything needs to be changed but we'll find out here shortly but more importantly we'll show you what to do to yours there we go so they're all loosened now we're gonna jack it up and put it on the jack stand now I'll show you a good place to put your jack and jack stands First, I'll show you this jack stand right here. And right there is a good place to put him, right on that metal piece where you see those two notches, kind of in the middle of that, just like that. And then over yonder here, we have the jack stand right in the middle. And as you can see, both the wheels are off the ground in this place where I've put the jacks the jack right there you can see both wheels they're off the ground and the place to get it there is right let's see I'm trying to help you find the location here right in the middle kind of where I have my plate there holding the place that is your good place that cross member right there to lift up not on that piece right there but just behind that piece lift it up and it'll lift both your tires up evenly all right, so now I'm just gonna finish removing these lugs. Set your tire off to the side. And and I had a question for you guys, any of the viewers who are in the Oklahoma or Texas region. I stumbled across something on Facebook the other day and it was talking about sovereign states and how they were independent from the federal government or something along those lines. And I was wondering, how exactly does that work? And I also saw something where President Obama revoked the sovereign state rights. And I was wondering about that. And does that mean you like don't pay federal taxes in a sovereign state? Or I would assume you still would. That seemed too good to be true. But oh, I couldn't find any good information on it, so just thought I'd ask you guys. So now we got our wheel off and we are going to remove the caliper and the bats and your rear. Okay guys, so the next thing we need to do is go ahead and get these two caliper bolts off and you're going to take a 14 millimeter socket and your ratchet. I'm just going to take these off and more on that post I was talking about there earlier, I was talking about the sovereign states. I read a post here recently on Facebook about sovereign states and how it said in the post that I read that Oklahoma had just passed a thing there where they became a part of the sovereign states and that's also along with Montana, Texas, and Utah. They're all sovereign states, and one of the cool things they did was they passed a law in the, the state house, 30, it passed 37 to 9, where the Ten Commandments shall be posted on at the front of the state capitol. So that's an interesting thing there. All right, and more on that here in just a second, but the next thing we need to do is go ahead and kind of wedge right here. We're going to compress this piston. See, it's kind of moving a little bit. And the more I compress it the more it'll want to come out. Now you can see it's really loose. There we go. And we're going to look at these pads. They're looking pretty slim there. Not good. So we're going to take these off and then um, tell you more that you need to know here. 
just a second once we get these off because I want you to see me to do the whole thing here I don't want you to miss anything normally you just wiggle them and they just pop right off here there we go so there we got that one out so I'm just gonna set this off to the side and then got that one out all right we have now reached the most important segment of this video please do not skip over this part of the video it's important for you to hear what I've got to say about rotors and it's important to assure that after you've done your brake repair your car will be safe to drive so we've got a few different options here when it comes to dealing with your rotors you can either replace your rotor have your rotor resurfaced or you can keep and use your current rotor as is now first I'm going to go over replacing the rotor it is an absolute must to replace the rotor if its measurement is below the minimum thickness threshold to ensure your car is safe to drive what I'm going to describe here in just a second whether you want or don't want to replace the rotor that's up to you affordability and comfort is at hand but if it is below the minimum thickness threshold there's no other way about it you must replace the rotor okay so now that we understand that and here in just a second I'll show you how to measure it and be able to tell whether it's below the threshold or not but now we're gonna talk about turning your rotors now there's a few there's a couple reasons you could turn your rotor and that's to keep your present ro rotor and you can pay about ten dollars to Napa or O'Reilly where they have a brake lathe and they will turn your rotor for you it's it's a cheaper option than buying a whole new rotor and the reason you'd want to do that is if you've wore your brake pads down metal to metal and the metal pad is wedged in grooves there and it's all torn up then you don't want to put new pads on that torn up surface with your old rotor so you'd want to have your rotor resurfaced and that's to ensure longevity for your new brake pads the other reason to have your rotors resurfaced at a parts store is if you're having vibration problems with your rotors that is if you're driving down the highway and you apply the brake pedal and you feel your brake pedal vibrating if you don't like that that would be a good reason to have your rotors turn but if you're really particular just keep in mind that when the rotors are thinner they're more likely to develop that warpage problem because what happens is you'll be driving down the road you'll run through a big puddle of water and the water will splash on the hot rotor and it'll warp the rotor the thicker the rotor is or the newer the rotor is it's going to be less likely to develop this problem so resurfacing the rotor if you have that problem will fix the problem but it'll come back faster so if you have the extra money and you really don't want that problem you can go ahead and just throw money at it and just get a new rotor every time but if you want to see the problem go away and risk it coming back or not it may or may not come back you can go ahead and turn it and get out of the situation cheaper and be more comfortable now the last option is to just keep your rotor and put new brake pads on that is a very acceptable option and that's what I do about 80 percent of the time again as long as the rotor is above the minimum threshold because if it's not it's not going to be safe to drive so it's okay to put new pads on your old rotor if it's smooth like this you can see right here as long as it's a semi smooth surface you can go ahead and put the new brake pads on it's really fine so those are the three options that you have replacing resurfacing or just keeping your old one and again most of the time most people are just fine keeping their old rotor and putting new pads on top of their old rotor one more thing I almost forgot to use rotors that cause vibration they're safe to drive it's just a uncomfortable thing the unsafe thing is the below the minimum thickness but rotors that cause vibration are safe to drive and also this minimum thickness number if I don't tell you exactly what the number is here in just a second you can find it at your parts store they'll they'll give you a discard thickness number on your rotor so keep that in mind too so we're now going to check the rotor to make sure it's above the minimum thickness threshold and for this particular rotor 23 millimeters is going to be the number you're looking for you want to make sure it's above 23 millimeters so I've got my set of digital calipers here and you do want the kind that will reach around the rotor like this and it has a point there so we're gonna start by zeroing out our tool there and making sure it's in millimeter mode then I'm just gonna go like this right here I'm gonna make sure it's flush on this side because that's the flat side and this side is the pointy side and we're measuring at 24.82 millimeters so it is well above the 23 millimeter mark there they come new 
for this particular car at 25 millimeters. Yes, the new rotor comes at 25 millimeters new, so again, this is plenty above the 23 millimeter minimum threshold here. All right, and the next thing we have to do is take off both of these bolts here, and we're going to take our 17 millimeter socket, and I use a bigger ratchet, because these guys are on there pretty good, and again, more uh, on today's topic, a topic I've chosen to speak about, the Oklahoma post on Facebook that I read earlier, was that the the Oklahoma state has decided to put a law through also that would require all driver license tests to be put through in English and English only. And that would make it so that the Spanish speaking population and other speaking language speaking population would not be able to take the driver's license test in Oklahoma. So my question is, how do you guys feel about that? Do you think it's a racist thing to do? They noted that Oklahoma is being called racist for doing this. I think it's actually a good thing to do. I'd kind of agree with them. And more on that in just a second, but next we're gonna go ahead and take off this rotor. And you saw me take it off there really easy. It was actually quite a tough thing to do. And if yours is also tough to take off, there is a video which will be linked in the video description. And there'll also be an annotation up now, which if you click on it, it'll take you to that video showing you how to remove those really tough to remove um, rotors.